Hello? Hello, Leanna? Mm-hmm. Hey, this is Dave. I'm your neighbor. I live over on Grass Tree Court. Over where? Uh, on Grass Tree Court. Oh, uh-huh. And um, I-, I was on your roof last night, and um, I don't know, I fell asleep, and I just kind of rolled, rolled off the roof and, like, fell on your lawn. <laughs> what were you and on the roof for? I was watching the stars. What side did you uh, fall on? Uh, the left side. So there was lots of grass. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I really hurt my shoulder. It sucks. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. I was just hoping maybe you could put a rail or something along the side of your roof to keep people from rolling off of it. Well, how, how many people are going to be on our roof? Oh, well, it was just me. I was just... I, I was watching the stars <laughs> and I felt... But I meant... I wondered... When this would happen again. Well, who knows? It depends on how much I've had to drink, really. <laughs> well, it's not funny, is it? No, 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 because I fell off the roof. It really hurt. Hmm, but what's your name again? My name's, oh, what did I say? Roy, I think. Roy? Yep. Roy what? Uh, Gerbel is my last name. I live over in... What? Gerbel. How do you spell that? G-H-A-R-B-U-L. Well, I'd uh, recommend you not getting on people's roof, because that's dangerous for you, and it might hurt the roof, too. Oh, no, I'm really careful. I have... I, I'm, I'm really... I'm good at walking on roofs, so it's okay. <laughs> I won't. I won't make any leaks happen or anything. No, I would appreciate you if you wouldn't walk on our roof. It would be, you know, I could be sued, maybe. I know. That's what I'm saying. You should put a, a rail up alongside the roof so I don't fall off again. Well, are you going to get up there again? Well, I don't know. I, I just like to get on people's roofs and look at the stars. Well, why don't you write us off of your list? That's not a list. I think that would be a better solution than us putting some kind of a preventative measure. Well, it's... it's not... I don't think... I've never heard of anybody getting on our roof before. Yeah, well, I'm quiet about it. I don't want to disturb you guys, but I, I just like to get on, on <laughs> random roofs around well, the neighborhood. I've, I might not know it was you. I might call the police. Oh, don't do that. No, because I have a record. I don't need the police bothering me. Well, I hate those. I don't those know police. which side it was on, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just thought which you should. Which side know. was it on? The north side or the east side or where? Uh, the left side. Left from what? From the house. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is it toward Pepper Ridge or is it toward? Well, Bay Tree or what? I think it's closer to Bay Tree, but you should just put rails along the entire perimeter of the roof, just on both sides, you know, just to be safe. <laughs> I doubt if we'll do that. Okay, well, I didn't hurt myself this time, thank God. I just, I, I hurt my well, shoulder. I think you better stay off of roofs. I, I was so That'd drunk. That would be the best solution. Yeah, I was so drunk that when, I hit, when I hit the ground. Or just on your yes. own roof. Oh, no, uh, my roof's, uh, it's too steep. That's dangerous. Hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't have very many. What did you do? Climb a tree? Oh, no, I just scaled the side of the building. <laughs> the side of the house. You I mean. what? I just scaled the side of the house. Huh. Well. I, I took a running jump. That seems like almost an impossibility. Oh, no, I'm a good <laughs> climber. <laughs> Well, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't do it again. Okay, I won't. I mean, I'll try not to, but, um, you know, well, I, I, I get drunk. I appreciate your thoughtfulness. Okay, well, um, I hope you have a nice Saturday. Okay, thank you. What, what you doing this weekend? You're listening to The Snowplow Show. Hey, 
there. You are listening to the Snowplow Show, episode 487. This is the show that happens usually twice a week where we call up strangers and present them with various wacky situations, see how they react, otherwise known as a prank call. Some people call this a prank call podcast. I'm your host, Brad. I've been doing this show for, I don't know, quite a while now. Six years, I think. Maybe seven. Wait, I have a chart. I made a chart the other day. I've been doing this for seven years. Technically six, though, because the first year was that video show thing I did where I just did three episodes and then gave up forever because making videos is hard work. I don't know if those count. And I'd like to say this is a record for me for how long I've lasted, you know, doing the same show without quitting. But it's not quite a record yet. It looks like I did PLA Radio from 2006 until 2012. That's technically seven years, even though I didn't do any episodes in 2011, and I only did one in 2012, the same year that I started this show. I don't know why I didn't just keep calling it PLA Radio. I think mainly because snowplows are much more topical than PLA Radio. It's a less confusing name. People aren't all like, what the hell's PLA stand for? They see the snowplow show, and they're like, oh, okay, I understand what this show's about. That makes sense. I'd listen to that. I forget who it was, but somebody on the PLA Facebook group was telling me that I did a lot more snowplow shows back in 2014 than I do today. So I wanted to prove them wrong. So I made this chart. I made a spreadsheet. And I made columns for every show I've ever done. And then I figured out how many shows I did in each of those years. So in 2012, I did three snowplow shows, the video ones. Then in 2013, I did 35 snowplow shows. I also did a bunch of other shows before those 35 that I didn't call the Snowplow Show, but eventually I'm like, you know what, I'm doing a lot of shows, I'm just going to call it something, instead of making up a ridiculous show title for every single show I do. Then in 2014, I did 101 Snowplow Shows, and it turns out he was right. I did 97 of them in 2017, 90 of them in 2016. You know, I had legal problems in 2016, so that's my excuse for only doing 90 of them. But whoever that was, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I forget who that was, and I can't find the post on the Facebook group now. I have such a shitty memory. But you were right, 2014, most snowplow shows ever done. But I made totals, and I'm going to tell you guys the totals right now, because you guys care about this. In 2006, I was doing PLA Radio and a show called Big Beef Bueno. That was 18 shows total between those two. That's the year that I discovered what podcasts were, and I'm like, holy shit, I gotta make podcasts. And you know what? I'm not going to do all these years. It'll take forever. I'm just going to start with 2014. 101 snowplow shows. But I also did one secret snowplow show that year. So technically 102 snowplow shows. And I did three other shows. I think that was the me and Stacy shows. I didn't call those snowplow shows for some reason. It's just called the Brad and Stacy in the morning show. So I did 105 shows total in 2014 between everything. In 2015, I did 100 shows total, mostly snowplow shows. 2016 was 100 again, and that was snowplow shows and hobo sods. That's the year I started the hobo sods. And then here's where it gets crazy, you guys. In 2017, 164 shows total. That's 97 snowplow shows, 55 hobo sods, 6 Mr. Dabalina's Wonderful World of Prank Calls, 6 Brad's Cactus Shack, If you've never heard those shows, you need to go listen to them. Brad's Cactus Shack is at notla.com. And Mr. Dabalina's Wonderful World of Prank Calls is at worldofprankcalls.com. 164 in 2017. So technically, in 2017, that's the most shows I've ever done before. Basically, I sucked in 2014 compared to 2017. And then in 2018, the year's not over yet. But so far, I've done 58 snowplow shows and 56 hobo sods. That's more hobo sods than I did all of last year. It basically means I've been doing two hobo sods a week on average all year this year. And then 11 World of Prank Call shows, 6 Cactus Shacks, 9 of the new call-in shows. So 140 shows this year compared to last year's 164. As I wrote on Twitter when I posted this spreadsheet, I think what we figured out here is that I need to get a life. But no, what it really means is you guys are fucking awesome. You've been supporting my show. You've been telling your friends and family about this show, getting more listeners to sign up, and making it possible for me to do this show for a living. Thanks, you guys, for being so nice and supporting the show, allowing things to get really out of control. I'm going to have more shows this year than I've ever done before in a single year. All thanks to the support that all of you give me on patreon.com slash phone losers. 
And as long as that keeps up, I can keep doing the shows at this rate. Holy crap, we're in the 31st week of 2018, which means that on average for this entire year, I've been doing four shows a week. And last year was three shows per week. Three shows make sense. Two snowplow shows and a hobo sewed. But now things are getting out of hand. What the hell are you guys doing supporting this show? And I'm kind of wondering, like, when's it going to stop? Am I going to have five shows a week by the end of this year? The year after that, is it going to be six shows a week? Is it going to turn into seven shows a week? I know there's got to be some sort of critical mass. You know, it can't just keep going up forever. It's got to level off at some point. But the thing is, if I keep getting more people supporting the show, then eventually, someday, I can maybe hire people to do the editing of the shows. Right now, I do all of my own show editing. So to put this show together, it'll probably take at least four hours for this show that's probably only an hour long, maybe an hour and a half depending on how long the voicemails are, maybe six hours total. It takes a long time. I posted a video uh, just a few days ago of the process of editing a single show. It takes up a lot of my time. I'm averaging at least eight hours a day doing this stuff, and most of it's editing and not making phone calls. Not to sound like I'm complaining. I'm not complaining one bit. I'm enjoying all of this, and it's all thanks to the support of listeners like you. And speaking of supporters of today's show, I'm going to have my personal assistant read who today's supporters are. Alexa, who are today's show sponsors? Today's Snowplow Show supporters are Jason B., Wolf and Ten, I Regret Jumping, Teen Wolf Jesus, and Lord and Lady of Veggies. Thanks, Alexa. You're welcome, Brad. So that's Jason B., Wolf of Ten, I Regret Jumping, Teen Wolf Jesus, and Lord and Lady of Veggies. Thanks, all five of you. I mean, all six of you for supporting today's show on the Patreon. Supporting the show apparently makes four shows happen every single week this year, and you get one or two secret shows every single week called The Hobo So it's only available at Patreon. And more importantly, it helps me pay off my legal fines, my restitution, my lawyer fees, and everything else that this show has gotten me into over the past couple of years. If you're a new listener, you might not be aware that I got into trouble with the FBI over prank calls back in 2016. I'm now a prank call felon. I'm on five years of probation. I have to pay like $19,000 back to the courts. I think I've paid about $1,500 of that so far. It's going slow. I've almost paid off the lawyer, though. That's almost done. And guess what else? I'm no longer on home detention. I don't have to check in to an automated system by phone three times a day like I've been doing for the past eight months. I'm free to stay out as late as I want now. It's crazy. If you want to know more about the whole legal situation incident thing, there's a detailed account of it in Hobo Sode number 51. I'll have a link to Hobo Sode number 51 in the show notes if you want to go listen to the detailed account of my crimes and my arrest and everything else. Speaking of that, I found a show the other day uh, by David King. A lot of you guys know David King from the PLA community. He does a lot of conspiracy type videos and he also does some prank calls, but he did an hour long thing about my FBI stuff and it's kind of funny. He just talks about the whole case. I think he reads through the newspaper article about the whole thing or court documents. I forget what he does exactly. This is a couple weeks ago that I noticed this video when he posted it in the PLA Facebook group, but it's kind of amusing. I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes too. The one thing I remember about it is that David King was talking about how they were saying that the prank calls were harming people, and then he would immediately play a prank call from that incident where the people I called were clearly not being harmed. Most of them were laughing and just thinking I'm an idiot when I call them, just like they always do. So everybody, go watch that video. It's amusing. I like it. Thanks, David, for making that. Man, this is turning into a long intro. I have one quick thing here before we get to the show, and that is... Richard's uh, eBay auction with PLA embroidered hats. He's got several of them here. He says he's going to give all of the money to the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation to celebrate Matt Hillock's birthday. So that's a good cause, right? The current bid is $18.50 and I'm winning, but you can outbid me by bidding exactly $1.05 if you want to steal this hat out from underneath me. And then there's a couple other hats in there. I'll have a link in the show notes if you want to take a look at that. Get yourself a embroidered PLA hat, an original design by Richard. 
There's less than three days to get that hat. Okay, let's get to the show that I did last night. This was a live show, a very late night live show. Well, late night for me. It started at about 9.30 at night, and I guess it went on for about 90 minutes, I guess, and it's been edited down to 44 minutes. So half of the show sucked. I took it out, but we had a good time. There's a lot of good suggestions in here. It's another one of those shows where I call up people and I tell them what I'm having dreams about, and not a single one of them seem to appreciate it. Weirdly enough, here it is. Hi, everybody. We're going to try and do a show tonight. I've been having internet issues. In fact, I should have done this while that song was playing, but I'm just going to do a quick thing here. Quick speed test. I think it's just like a problem in the city or something, you know? It's not me. It's everybody. Yeah, I've got like good upload speeds, but I have horrible download speeds. I have like... 34 megabits per second, and I should have like 180. That's why Carol sounded like crap earlier, calling into Mr. Biggs. Carol was using my internet to call in, you know. So, um, yeah, tonight might not go well. I might just have to totally give up. But we'll give it a try. We'll see what happens. See if people that I call yell at me for uh, my internet, my voice sounding terrible, everything echoing. So tonight, I'm just going to be telling people about my dreams. Probably won't even do an hour. It'll be fun. Hello? Hello. Gary? Who's calling? Uh, it's Roy. I'm your neighbor. I live down the street from you. Okay. Um, hey, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually... Uh, I'm actually asleep right now. I'm having a dream, and I've been experimenting with lucid dreaming, and I'm calling you from my dream right now. Seriously. Gary? 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 Gary, are you still there? I, I think I can hear you still. Hello? Gary, I just want to make sure this is working. I had some questions. God damn it, Gary. Probably only had one shot at this. You ruined it. All right, Gary's just gonna sit there. God damn it! It's okay, Cody. No name. I had a trace, tracer buster on the line. So, good luck with that, Gary. By the way, there's a chat room tonight. If you're listening on the shoutcast, you don't get to see the chat room. But if you want to chat, it's mixler.com/slash phone losers. If the mixler is too crazy a bandwidth for you. You can go listen to the shoutcast like a hobo over at phonelosers.com slash live. I don't know whose idea that was about the uh, lucid dreaming. I really want to do that one, though, where they don't just, you know, sit there and not say anything. I'm not reading another bedtime story. Not after the, the last incident. The debacle. <laughs> I don't want to be made fun of for two weeks straight again. Why would I do that to myself? It's bad for my mental health. Fool me once. Hey, it's Carol, and leave a message, and I'll... Hey, it's Carol. So that guy, uh, Gary, I, I don't want to say the full street name, but uh, his street actually has the word heron in it. Exact same spelling. There's some other words around it. I thought that was funny. I wasn't going to bring it up, but you guys are bringing up the bad memories of the story. So why not? Stupid Gary. He couldn't just, like, take a minute out of his dream to be funny at us. (laughs) Slug Powder wants me to say I had a bad dream and I want to sleep over. Hello? Hello, Ronald? Yes. Hey, it's, it's Roy. I'm your neighbor. Yes. How you doing? Just fine, thanks. That's good. Were you asleep? Yes. 
Okay, I thought so. Um, so I've been experimenting with lucid dreaming, and I was uh, I was able to uh, not lucid dreaming, but you know, uh, astral traveling. Please, uh, Roy, I'm going to go back to bed. No, wait, no, I have to ask you to bye do bye. something for me, please. Can you do one thing? Yeah, I'm going to go back to bed. No, can you do one thing, please, Ronald? Come on. Dang it, dang it. I fucked that one up anyway. I didn't want to talk about lucid dreaming. I wanted to talk about astral traveling. Well, at least the audio seems okay. The area that I'm calling, it is currently 1 in the morning there. So maybe I shouldn't have... Uh, maybe I should have started this like an hour ago. There, that's more dreamlike. That music. Less likely to make them hang up when they first pick up. Hello? Hello, hello, Bob? Bob? Yeah, yeah, Bob. Bob and Joyce. See what time it is? Yeah, I'm sorry to be calling so late. Um, I was, I was asleep. Were you asleep just now? Who is this? It's Roy. I'm your neighbor. Roy? Yeah, Roy, down the street. I don't have a neighbor down the street. I don't know anybody. Who is this? This is Roy. I'm your neighbor. Look, I had a bad dream, and I was just wondering if you could just talk to me for a minute. Uh, what address are you at? I'm, I'm at uh, 5 Periwinkle. Goodbye. What? You don't like me because I'm on Periwinkle? I had a bad dream. He had a bad dream. Yeah. Sorry. What did he say about David? He's my neighbor. What's his address? Five. Michael. God, speak up, you guys. Bob? 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 Sorry if that's loud for you guys. It's really loud for me too, though. That hurt. I think they went back to sleep. <laughs> Usually help me, Ron, to get some. All right. Gonna give up on Bob, I guess. I wish they would have talked about me for a little bit longer. That was sort of Slug Powder's idea. Thanks, Slug Powder. He wanted me to ask if I could sleep over. Cody, no name says I should tell them I had a dream that I wronged them, and I want to apologize. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic... What if I said, um, I had a dream that I had sexual relations with his wife? And that was not, not, not a nice thing to do, and I'm very sorry. It's wrong to do that, even in, in a dream. Hello? Hi, uh, Debbie? Yes. It's Roy, your neighbor. Oh, Roy, my neighbor. Yes. Hey, um, were you sleeping? Uh, yeah. I'm so sorry to call this late. Roy. Yeah. I used to live down the street. Which neighbor? Um, I'm the fat one. Roy. Um, where, where are you? I'm just I'm in a daze right now. Okay. Were you planning to go to Walmart tomorrow? Uh, who? Roy, Roy who? Um, Zerbel. Roy, where... Who, where, where, are you, where are you calling from? I'm over on Periwinkle. I, I, but you know me, like we've we've met before. What do you need? Well, I, were you planning on going to Walmart tomorrow? Because I was having a dream that you guys were going to Walmart and something bad happened, and I just think maybe you shouldn't go to Walmart tomorrow. Um. Okay. What? What's your last name? Zerbel. 
Zerbel. Okay. All right. Were you going to go to Walmart tomorrow? I don't think so. Maybe just go to the regular grocery store instead. Okay. Thank you. Um. Hey, Debbie? Yes, sir. Um, it was kind of a bad dream. Do you think you could just talk to me for a minute? So I can get back to sleep. I, just a second, okay? <laughs> hey, Roy? Yeah? Uh, wh where, where are you calling from again? What's that? Where are you calling from again? Perry Winkle. Wh where's Perry Winkle? Uh, you know, it's like down a little bit around the corner. It's close by. Okay. We're, we're with the same homeowners association. Oh, I'm sorry. D don't, don't. <laughs> and the husband told her to hang up and she had to listen to him. God, Debbie, think for yourself for once in your life. Don't have to listen to what he says. Just flip him off. Like, no, I won't hang up. I'm going to talk to Roy. Quit trying to tell me I can't have male friends. There's nothing going on. Wolfatin wants me to say that I had a dream they were better looking than they actually are, and I wanted to tell them they could get a makeover for only 30 bucks. Over at the mall. I used this list the other day, and I got a lot of good answers. Um, what was I doing? I think I was saying I was with the, uh, the mayor's office and having a meeting in your yard, digging for time capsules. That was this list. I had a good answer rate. But the answer rate seems to go down a little bit once you hit 1 a.m. or so. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Texas Derek wants me to say that their dreams are being too loud. They need to tell their dreams to shut the fuck up. God damn it, everyone. Stop having good ideas. There's too many of them. There's not enough answers. It's just making me sad because I can't get to all of these now. Hello. Oh, hello? Kathy? Yes. Oh, hey, it's it's Roy. I'm your neighbor. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm so sorry to be calling this late. Um, were you asleep? Um, well, of course. Okay. Um, I I was just having this. Um, I, I was I was having this dream that uh, Pepsi stocks were doing really well tomorrow, and you should probably like. Can Can you get on the computer and just buy stock in Pepsi? Can you just stop doing this sort of thing? Well, no, I'm, I'm serious. What's that supposed to mean? Like she knows me or something. It's the first time I've called her. Slug powder, your idea, it, it sucked. It sucked really bad. You ruined it. Never doing that one again. Never doing slug powder's ideas again. Cactus Rider says to call back and say, sorry, I meant Coke. This is Brad. Leave a message. Oh, shit. That's that Brad from the Hobo Sode. I forgot to cross him out. Shit. <laughs> you guys remember Brad, right? I'm kind of glad he didn't pick up. He was really upset with me on the, on the last Hobo Sode I did. I forgot what I was doing. Oh, yeah. I was digging in his front yard for a time capsule. He did not like that at all. Hello. Hello, Anthony? It's Roy. I get the wrong number. No, it's Roy. Oh, is this Ed? Yes, yeah, Ed. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Ed. Um, hey, th it's your neighbor, Roy. I live over on... Oh, yeah. Per yeah. Yeah. Um, were you sleeping? I'm sorry to call so late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. I I was just having this dream that you told me you d you didn't like me in the dream, and it, it wasn't cool. And can you apologize, please? <laughs> Come on. Oh. Can you please apologize? Yeah. Sure. Sorry, man. What? I said yeah. Okay. Well, go ahead. I'm ready.
<laughs> Ed? I just said it. No, I didn't hear it. Like, you got to say it so I can hear it, or it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Fuck. I'm going to be doing this for, like, another half hour, maybe. So something, something's got to happen in a half hour, right? This night's not going to be a total waste. I think something will happen. I don't think the entire show is going to be boring. I have faith. Hi, this is Becky. I'm not available. Yeah, Becky's such a bitch. Your call has been forwarded to an... I just want to punch Becky. Right in that face. That face of hers. What am I going to do next? I like Dragon Mirror's idea. I dreamt that they got an advanced copy of Grand Theft Auto 6. I don't know if it's any good. But I don't think that's going to work with these people. <laughs> these are all old people, it seems like. I mean, not super old, but... Still. I had a dream that they were drinking Coke. From this not Brad person. And I could have sworn they were Pepsi drinkers. What's going on? It's pretty weird. They left their garage door open. It's making the neighborhood look trashy. They have to run downstairs and check. Hello? Hey, um, Gus? Yes? It's your neighbor, Roy. Hey, Roy. Hey, um, your, you know, your, your alarm clock, it's too bright. Can you close your curtains, please? Uh, which alarm clock? I don't know. It's like a bedside alarm clock. It's got the red, the red LEDs on it. It's just way... Uh, is it upstairs? Yeah, it's just way too bright. And, like, I can't even sleep tonight. Can you just shut your curtains? Uh, sure. How long is it going to take? I'll go up there right now. Do you know which one I mean? Not really, but I'll see. Can you stay on the phone with me while you do it? Just so I can make sure we get the right one? Hello? Did you find it? Gus? Yeah. Did you find it? No, there are no alarm clocks. Also, also, can you quieten down the, the crickets in your lawn as well? I will kill whoever this is. No, I'm serious. You need to be neighborly. <laughs> Great, Mr. Biggs, you're going to get me killed. And, and slug powder. Actually, I think it's slug powder's fault because the crickets thing was his, his idea. I can't believe we heard him stomping up the stairs. I can't believe it took the cricket comment to make him realize it was not real. Mr. Biggs wants me to say their windows are too reflective. The street lights are shining off of them and keeping the baby awake. Let's save that one for later. I'm going to have to do one of these shows, like, you know, not lives, just so I can get all these ideas done. You guys have too many ideas. Oh, Sean. Hey, John? Yes. Uh, this is Roy from the Homeowners Association. Okay. Um, hey, I was, uh, I was just sleeping. Were you sleeping, too? Yes. Okay, um, I was having this weird dream that, like, in your backyard, there's this trap door, and it leads down to a tunnel network underneath the ground. You know where the tree is? John? Yes? Can, can you go check real quick? 
No. Because I have a pretty good track record for my dreams being true. And I, I just want to know if this one's true because it felt really, really realistic, really vivid. Crap. That was Snappy Bake's idea. <laughs> She's like, yes, in the chat room. I don't know why, though. It didn't work. Hello? Hi. Um, hello? Hello? Hey, it's your neighbor. Is this Charles? Yes. Okay, great. This is Roy. It's your neighbor. Roy? Yeah, Roy. R-O-Y. I'm your neighbor. Yeah, down at the court? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, how are you doing tonight? I'm I'm sorry to be calling so late. Yeah, what what's up? Um I I um I was sleeping just a few minutes ago. Yes. And I I had a I was having a dream and in my dream your dreams were being way too loud. So do you think you could just dream quieter, please? Roy, is this for real? Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not trying to be unreasonable. It's just like your dreams are being really loud and they're keeping me up. <laughs> Texas Derek, thanks for that one. I forgot who I called on that one. I forgot to mark it. Found it just in time. You're home for the PLA, the Mr. Beast Radio Show. And umbrellas. One second. My headset just came apart. <laughs> Cat Time Radio. Yeah, what does that mean down at the courts? Hello. Hey, uh, Dryden? Yes. It's your neighbor, Roy? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm with the Homeowners Association. Uh, you asked us to give you a uh, wake up call. At exactly one forty no. a.m. No. No, you you did. It's it's here on our on our list. You asked for a wake up no. call. No, for what? I mean. Oh, I don't know. I, it's none of my business. I, I'm not gonna <sighs> ask. I'm just I'm just here to wake you up. I need to make sure you're awake. Oh, you've done that. You, uh, well, please take us off that list. If, well, do you, what? Don't you have to get up for something? Do you have a flight or something? No. Do you, no. Do you have to like bake some things. Oh, right, please. Well, I don't know. I don't know what you have planned for tomorrow. I just know that you called and asked Nothing to be... Nothing you, you Good night. Go back to bed. Wait, ma'am. Wait. Wait. <laughs> we, we need to discuss payment. That was Swiss, Guard, Swiss Guard's idea. That was going to be $5.99. I was about to make some money, and she hung up on me. I like that idea of food stamp tacos. I'm going to... Pasted in my gigantic list here. Tell him I was having a nightmare and I saw this phone number scratched onto a wall before I died. Hello? Hi, Mary? Yeah. It's Roy. I'm your neighbor. I'm sorry. Oh. To, I'm sorry to call so late. Yeah. Hey. Who, which neighbor? Uh, Roy, the fat one. Yeah. What's wrong? Uh, well, nothing's wrong exactly. It's just um, I was asleep, and I was having this really bad dream. And right before I woke up, I was looking on this wall, and I saw your phone number scratched into the wall right before I died. And then I woke up, and I called it, and I recognized the number. It's you. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of an upsetting dream. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Well, why are you calling? Because it was the last thing I saw before I woke up, and well, before I died, and then I woke up. Um, do you think you could like just talk to me or tell me a story before I go back to sleep? Oh no, we were asleep. But uh, I know. Good luck. Can, no, can you help me fall asleep? No. Can you just tell me a quick story, please? Don't know how to do that. Oh, come on. Just tell me, like, tell me about your day. Like, <laughs> did you go to the grocery store or anything? Uh, nope. Didn't do a thing. So good luck with everything. Okay. Well, <laughs> and can... good night. <sighs> All right. Well, you know, <laughs> she, 
It's not helping. Food stamp tacos idea. I forgot the, like, I shouldn't have said that I knew her number. Because then it's not as impressive, you know? Like, for it to show up in a dream like that. Silly me. I ruined food stamp tacos idea. Sorry, food stamp taco. I'm sleep calling and it's dangerous to wake me. Good idea. It's almost as if they don't all have bedside phones. And they can't make it to the phone within four rings. I think if I'd called an hour earlier, I'd have better luck. Because they'd be slightly more awake. They could run to the phone. That's the problem, right? Hello? Hi, Pamela? Yes? Uh, this is Roy from the Homeowners Association. Yes. And um, I'm sorry to call so late. Were you sleeping? No. Okay, that's good. Um, I was asleep. I, I was having this dream that um, you guys were painting your house uh, pastel color. And I'm sure you know that's not allowed in this neighborhood. Who is this again? Uh, this is Roy from the Homeowners Association. Uh-huh. And I had this dream that you were you were painting your house. Like a... I don't know what you talked about. This weird... Okay. Hello? Hello? Um, th this is Roy from the Homeowners Association. Yeah? And I was just... Uh, I was asleep, and I was having this dream that you're painting your house a color that's not authorized. It was this weird yeah. pastel, not quite pink... But kind of no, like I don't know what you nearly orange, in a way. Just this really off. Listen, yeah, what? I don't know who you are calling here at one o'clock with that off the wall stuff. But no, I'm, I'm, you got the wrong uh, number, buddy. Oh, oh no, this is Campbell, right? Why are you calling me at one a.m.? Well, I'm with the homeowners association. Well, that doesn't give you the right to call me at 1 a.m. What I know, time is it? I, I was having a, a, a bad dream that you were painting your house an unauthorized color. And it's 2 o'clock in the morning. That's a finable offense. Well, listen, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. You don't call me at 2 o'clock in the morning, buddy. I, know, I, norm, I haven't painted my house pink. I haven't painted an unauthorized Normally, I, I don't know who you are. But don't call me at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm sorry to be calling so late. It's just normally... Sir, crap. Yeah, call him back at three and get some better quotes for the, the PLA clock, you know? I really want to do an astral traveling call. I forget where that idea came from. I was listening to some show. They were talking about astral traveling. Oh, that was uh, Jack. Jack Heliquin. Sorry, Mr. Call. Please leave me a message. Thank you. The other night, he was talking about astral traveling on his show. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to tell people I've been experimenting with astral traveling. It happens while I, while I sleep. It's, it's not, not a voluntary thing. But I keep astral traveling into their bedroom. We need to do some things to verify. Hi, you've reached Marty and Kathy. Back when I used to listen to uh, Mysterious Universe more often, they would talk about astral traveling a lot. And they said, you know, a lot of... Uh, people on the operating table um, would be like legally dead for a minute or a second or whatever and they would astral travel outside of their bodies and all these people would have the same experience so they put high shelves up in this operating room and they put these crazy symbols on the high shelves so when they astral traveled outside of, is that no that's an out of body experience that's not astral traveling but anyway that's what I was thinking I could tell them, ask them to, to, to write out weird symbols on papers and, and put them around their room. And then later I could call them back and ask them to identify those symbols. It's a great idea, right? This is Steve and Julie. We, we could shake up the, the metaphysical world with this. We could prove it with these symbols. It's not silly, dark whatever. It's, it's real. It's totally real. Don't be such a doubter. Hello. Hi, Madeline. Yes. It's it's your neighbor, Roy. Roy. Yeah, you know Roy. Oh, Roy, Roy. Yes. Yeah, over by the courts, right? No. Well, no. I'm, yeah, Roy Woods, though. Yeah, it's me. 
Yes, 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 Roy. Okay. Um, hey, I've been doing this thing lately in my sleep where I've, I've been astral traveling, and I keep astral traveling into your and, yours and Jerry's bedroom. It's the weirdest thing. So, uh, you know, it's like an out-of-body experience, but I'm, I'm, in, I'm in your bedroom, but you can't see me. And I was hoping we could... I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it's, it's astral traveling. It's like, I'm, I'm just... Fuck. Forget it. It's going to be too hard to explain. I can't do this. I tried. <laughs> what was the other one I did right at the beginning of this show? Oh, yeah. Lucid dreaming. How about lucid dreaming? Can I lucid dream at somebody? Before we get going? She's probably never going to talk to Roy again. Swiss Guard wants me to say I astral traveled, but got stuck inside their dream catcher, so I need them to let me out. Hello, you have reached Lori. Please. That would be a great prank for somebody, you know, if I knew they had a dream catcher. That would be fun. Hello? Hi, Lori. Yeah. It's Roy, your neighbor. Who? Roy. You know, your neighbor. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm so sorry to be calling this late. I, I normally, okay. I normally wouldn't that? call this late. I'm, I'm really sorry. Hey, um, I, I, I've been um, l experimenting with lucid dreaming. So like when I'm dreaming at night, I'm actually able to control my dreams. And I'm actually making this phone call to you from within my dream, if you can believe it. Damn it. She didn't believe it. <laughs> All right, enough of that silliness. I, I'll, I'll cut it out. I'm going to do that some night by myself. Like, just make that call over and over and over until I get a really amazing response. That's what I'll do. Makeover idea. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there it is. Wolf of Tin. I, I got it. I'll probably end up making a woman cry with this, though. Leave a message after the She'll be like, Roy doesn't think I'm pretty. Because I'm basically calling them ugly if I do your idea. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. I had a dream they weren't going to be a drain on society's resources. Oh, hello? Oh, you ruined it, Slug Powder. They were listening when I said that. You, you, you blew it. David? Hello? Yeah, yeah, hello. Oh, hey there. It's Roy, your neighbor. Oh, hi. Hey, I'm, I'm so sorry to be calling this late. Okay. Um, I, I was just, I, I was asleep, and I was dreaming okay. that um, you were actually better looking than you are in real life. Okay. And, like, did you know they have this place over at the mall where you can get, like, a makeover for 30 bucks? Well, you know, I'm not interested. Thanks for calling. No, no, it's not a sales call. I swear. Hey. David? Hello? Hello? David? He had a good sense of humor about it. I realized as I was saying it, it sounded kind of like a sales pitch. McScat wants me to tell them how cool they were in the dream that I had. And now I want them to be more like a surfer dude. Great idea. That'd be funny if they started doing it in real life. Hello? Hello, Lynn? Lynn? Yes. Hey, it's your neighbor, Roy. Yes. I I'm sorry to be calling so yes. late. It's okay. Okay, yeah, I was just calling to let you know that I'm really sorry to be calling so late. Oh, okay. Yep, I'm sorry about that. I, w I normally wouldn't call this late. Ah. She didn't want to get caught up in my loop. It's a great show. People just hang up on me. Best show ever. No. Hi, Alexandra? Yes. Um, it's Roy, your neighbor? 
Yes. Uh, I just wanted to call and say that I'm really sorry for calling so late. What can I do for you? I, it's hard to hear you. What was that? I'm, I'm sorry. What can I do for you? Uh, nothing really. I just wanted to call and say that I'm really sorry for calling so late. I, I normally wouldn't call this late. Oh, okay. What can I do for you? Uh, nothing. Nothing. I'm just calling to apologize. Because I, I, you know, I probably woke you up, and I, I normally just wouldn't call this late. Alexandra? Hello? What do you need? I, I don't need anything. I'm just calling to apologize for calling so late. Okay, I'll, I'll try thank to you. I'll try to call at a better hour next time. Hello, Alexandra? Yes. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be calling this late. Okay. Okay. Bye. Are you, are you going to go back to sleep? Alexandra? <laughs> I thought she was going to come back. She kept coming back. All right, I'm happy that one was done. But anyway, I have like a, just a partial column left. I know I said I was going to quit like six minutes ago. But why not just finish up this page? It's not a full column. There's a big advertisement underneath. I'll be happy if Alexandra was the last one, though. She was fun. She just kept coming back. I felt like she kept putting the blankets over her head and then like peeking out to talk to me again. I'm calling because I want to know who the hell they think they are. All right, Dr. Punchy. All right, this one's not even ring it. Let me try it one more time. There's only a couple more left. I should have just left it at Alexandra. Maybe the very last one, I'll call back like seven times. So they have to get out of bed and run down the hall. Hello. That's a problem. I can't come to the Probably trip down the stairs and get Mrs. Cottoned. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. What? Oh, Please? yeah, I dialed the number wrong. See, I need to get to sleep. I'm dialing numbers wrong. I started that one with a zero. I've never fallen asleep on a stream, but I've heard other people do that. It's amusing. That happened on the Dick Show not too long ago. They had a... Sorry, I can't get to the phone right now. A guy calling in. Uh, I forget why, or I, I don't know, but like he was snoring on the stream. They just let it go. They just let him snore in the background. I've heard prank callers do that. I'm too light of a sleeper to, to fall asleep sitting up. Cool Rob, he did that all the time. He would do it on camera. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Hey, uh, Shannon? Yeah. It's Roy. I'm your neighbor. Yeah. Hey, um, I'm sorry to call so late. Were you asleep? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I, was, I was asleep, too. I, I had a dream that your phone wasn't working, so I was calling to see if it was, and it, I guess it actually is because you picked up. Okay. So... Yeah, I just I thought your phone wasn't going to work. Who is this? It, it's Roy. I'm your neighbor. I just live down the street a bit. Where are you at? I'm um, over on Perry Winkle. That's not that's not a street name. Yeah, it is. L look on your map. I, I know what street I live on. I'm not an idiot. We're in the same homeowners association. You know, you know what's my name, Roy? What? You know someone named Roy? Dude, why are you calling me? Cause I was I was having at a two a, two a.m. in the morning. Um, cause I was having a this weird dream that your phone wasn't working, like there was a problem with your phone line. But in my dream, your phone wasn't working and you didn't pick up. But so I called and th here you are. So I guess my dream, you know, it's. Dreams don't always come true. 
Well, won't you have a dream and come to my front door now? Right now? No. Why don't you do that? No, I don't want to come over right now. I'm in my pajamas. I'm not going to get out of bed. That'd be stupid. <laughs> what is he being so pissed for? Uh, dark Ages. That was his idea. It was a good one. I was confused about his name because it was like two female names. His name was Shannon, I guess. It's almost it's almost as, as if he asked his wife kind of accusingly, like, do you know a Roy? Like I was hoping she would pick up, you know? I should call back that guy, Shannon, like in an hour and say, hey, I had a dream that I came to your front door and kicked your ass. I just want to apologize for that. Hello, Phil? Huh? Hello, it's it's this is Roy, your neighbor. Uh, sorry, it's two AM. Oh no, it's okay. I, I forgive you. Um hey, I was I, I'm sorry to call so late. <laughs> Phil? Oh, goodbye. No, no, I have something to tell you. Fuck. He's got two numbers. I had to call the other one. But no, no, no. Just gonna move on. Move on to the last few here. Hello? Hello, Richard? Yeah? Hey, it's it's Roy. I'm your neighbor. Yeah? I um, live down the street. Hey, uh, I'm sorry to call so late. Richard? Yeah? Hey, um... I, I, I was just, I, I was having this dream that I wronged you and I felt like I needed to call and apologize for wronging you. And, and it was just in my dream though, it wasn't in real life. Who is this? It's Roy, your neighbor. Okay. I, I think you have the wrong have number. No, it, it's Richard, right? No. Yeah, it is. Richard, and that's Sherry. I know Sherry's voice. I'm not stupid. What, what, what are you guys trying to pull? And you need to tell her to just shut up. Like, I wasn't even talking to her. What, what's she buttoning in for? All right. Sherry trying to trick me. Jeez. That's Cody No Name's idea that didn't work out at all. Thanks for that, Cody No Name. All right, last one. Let's see. Um, challenge them to a sleepwalking race. You both go back to sleep and see who ends up at the end of the street first. That's from the last show. Trap door to a tunnel network? No, I did that already. I don't know. I'm just going to say I'm with the HOA and see where it goes. Hello? Hi, Carol? Yes? It's Roy, your neighbor. I I'm, I'm with the, uh, the Homeowners Association. I don't have a neighbor named Roy. Yeah, but I'm with the Homeowners Association. I, I don't live, like, right by you. I live way over on Periwinkle. Well, why are you calling in the middle of the night? I'm sorry to be calling so late. We got a complaint about you. Uh, about me? Yeah, that your, your windows on your house are really, they're, like, way too reflective. And the street lights are shining off of them. And they're keeping the baby awake. Your windows, they're, they're way too reflective. Oh, come on, Carol. I'm calling Carol back. That was Mr. Big's idea. Blame him. Yeah, she couldn't spring for the premium glass. She had to get the, the shitty hobo gla glass. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message. Darn it, Carol. <laughs> she doesn't have any windows well thanks for listening everyone thanks for all those ideas that was a lot of fun I want to do a show by myself and, and just do uh, lucid dreaming and, and astral traveling and <laughs> maybe I'll do that tomorrow night but yeah thanks for all the ideas that was a lot of fun still a lot of people left in this directory I will get 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 to them soon, one of these days. 
Bye, everyone. Uh, hey, Brad, it's Corbin guy. Hey, yeah, Corbin, Corbin guy. yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, and I know how much you love ideas on the voicemail, and that's yeah, why I got one for you. They're the best. So please bear with me. Thanks. Um, you've been using a lot of regular pseudonyms uh, throughout your shows, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, Roy and, and, and Steve Dave and Mr. Dobbelina and such. Yeah. So how about some new ones? But 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 c- can you make them, like, really unbelievable? Like, I'm Patrick Henry or <laughs> I'm Benedict Arnold. Okay. You know, something like that. How about Seymour Butts? That may be great, right? Okay, all right. There, there, there's some food for thought. Talk to you later. Love you much. Hey, oh, and by the way, you're doing a pretty goddamn nice fucking stuff. good job now that you're retired and, you know, just accused by the FBI for all this other bullshit, which I'm probably involved other bullshit. in. So, anyhow, what? talk to you later. Bye bye. There's new stuff? Fuck, I gotta get out of this quick. What do you mean, other bullshit? Hey, Brad. Hey. Hey, Mr. Martin Savage. Hey, Martin. Martin. Thanks for showing me. Sounds like a fake name. Thanks for showing me, Mr. Big. I listened to the show, and it was awesome. Yay. And I like how you parade Roger the whole time. It's fucking great. Awesome job. I love it. Thanks for showing me. You're welcome. Also, what kind of mixer do you use for the stuff on show? All right. Hopefully that was under 30 seconds. 22 seconds. You did it. And yeah, Mr. Biggs, he is fucking awesome. Been a huge fan of him and Roger for eight or nine years now. I suggest everybody listen to everything that Mr. Biggs has ever done at AskMrBiggs.com. I suggest starting with the old show, Ask Mr. Biggs, and then move on to the new show, the Stick It With Mr. Biggs show. Stick it. That's what I would do. And now they're doing a brand new show, the call-in show. They did their first official show last night. They've done a a bunch of test shows before that. But last night, I guess, was episode number one officially. And that was a lot of fun. Carol called in. A few other PLA people called in. I don't know how often those are going to happen, but they're fun to listen to. And what mixer do I use? I use Behringer mixers. It looks like the primary mixer is a Xenix X1204 USB. And I have two mixers sitting side by side next to each other here on the desk because I ran out of inputs. I tried just buying a bigger mixer that had more inputs on it. I got the one that had like 12 slider things on it and it was fucking great. It worked great, but it didn't do the phone calls the way it was supposed to. It seems like this is the only mixer I've found that does the phone calls properly. I've had two other mixers in here that I've tried out before and they don't loop the phone calls the way that it's supposed to to make it easy for me to make phone calls and take phone calls. Like, you can only hear one side of the audio. It's a big pain in the ass. Maybe I was just hooking it up wrong. I don't know much about mixers. But the other mixer that I have sitting next to this one, it's the secondary mixer. It's a Behringer Xenix 1204 USB. It's, you know, it's the same model, but without the X. I guess that means it doesn't have the effects built into it, which I hardly ever use anyway. So I don't know if the one without the X will work for phone calls. I've never tried that. I bet you it would. They're the exact same mixer. Just one is $20 cheaper, I think. If you want to know more about my setup, I've made several videos of a Situation Room Tour, and you can find those at phonelosers.com slash FAQ. I really should just set up some kind of a studio page on snowplowshow.com with pictures and stuff. Hey, this is Micro Gorgi calling in for a second time. Hello. Just wanted to let you know there's going to be another song coming out. This time it's not just by me. Oh, I got shit. somebody else involved dragged into this. Oh, it's another guy I got listening to your show, and I, I'm really hoping he's giving you money. So he better be. If Quickfire isn't giving you money, then beat the shit out of him yeah. or something. Fuck you, know. Quickfire, like, for not giving me awesome money. Shows. Unless really you are. Love all the hobo shows. Y'all need to give him some money. But yeah, before too long, you'll have another song coming in. Cactus, cactus. Thanks, Micro Wait, are you saying I need to give him money, or he needs to give me money? I'm just going to assume that he needs to give me money so I don't have to give him money. But So is that a new PLA song? That'd be awesome. Hey, Brad. It's Mr. Biggs. Ah, uh, come uh, on. I was listening to the show we did together. And needless to say, I was not happy about it. You guys, I, I think this might not be the real Mr. Biggs. I was pranked by your listeners. Call me crazy, I but... I misrepresented. I'm, I'm sorry about this, Mr. Biggs. I don't know who this guy is impersonating you. I know this isn't you. I will you. not, as a male, file a lawsuit against All you. All right, thanks, fake Mr. Biggs. I love that you're playing more rappy. 
I hope to hear him Me on too. the Not Phone show soon. You should get Linear on too, so he can bore us with hockey. Yeah, that'd be great. The Linear Hockey Show. I need to do that. And I guess since that was a short message and this next one is a short message, I'll let you have two messages. As for changing the name on this to show. the PLA show, I kind of like that it's the PLA show and, you know, the theme song, you know, it's all about the PLA. But if you were to change the song, or, I, sorry, the name of the show, I personally like calling it the Totally Not the Phone Show. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I'll probably just keep being lazy and calling it the PLA show or just Phone Losers of America. Hey, Brad, it's Mike again. Hey, ah, I was watching the Garfield show. The Garfield show. A bunch of uh, the fuck random the phone calls. What? All right, this goes on for about a minute, and there's more text in the translation thing. Here, let me skip forward. He said, "No, I already." This <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, I think there was a whole story there, but he's calling from a hobo phone, so we can't hear him. Hi, Brad. It's Mr. Pickle. Hey, Mr. Calling Pickle. Calling a quick question about an old prank call that I think was by you guys. Uh, there was this uh, lady called Karen Annis, and uh, I don't even remember if it was you talking to her. Like, maybe it was Zach or Cal or somebody. But uh, maybe. I just remember she was all uh, business-like replying, uh, uh, this isn't Mrs. Anus, this is Mrs. Annis. And, mm. uh, you know, Anus, tee And I just remember giggling like a schoolgirl at that. I searched on the website and the media pack and everything and Google and had a hard time finding it. So, yeah, Karen Anus. And uh, which mm. call was that, please? Mm. Thank you, sir. I've never heard of this. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't think that was me, but maybe a listener will know what you're talking about. If anyone knows anything about Karen Anus, please leave a comment or call in with the voicemail. Roy, this prank's going to go down in history. Oh, it's going to live in infamy. This one's awesome. All right. Why don't you call, a, like, a 7-Eleven and say, hey, I just won the big bucks. And uh, I always tip really, really big. So I was hoping to come down there, and I was thinking I'd give you, like, $10 and mm -hmm. see what they think. Because, you know, it'd be like, I usually tip, like, 2 or $3 to waitresses, but I'm super stoked. Here's 10 bucks, And just see if they're pissed or not. Okay, love you, Roy. Okay. Cactus. I'll do that. Or you could do it and send it in to me. Let me know how it goes. Hi, Brad. Uh, Hello. First time caller, first time listener. No, wait. First time listener, last time caller. Uh, uh, I mean, a uh, long time uh -huh. caller, last time listener. Uh, oh, first time caller, long time listener. Okay, bye. Thanks for calling in. Congratulations on being a first-time caller. Brad, 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 Brad. Oh, I, Brad. I was. <laughs> okay, that was the end of that one. Like, there's no silence or anything. It's just a four-second-long voicemail. I think he face-dialed the hang-up button. Hey, Roy. It's Tire Shine Eight One Seven here. Hey. Um, I was just wondering. Um, let's see. How do I put this? Um. Would you ever call Discount Tires? Because there's like not over 900 of them across I the United States. I have called Discount Tires. I think they'd be pretty funny to prank call. That's the one where I was calling up Discount Tires and I was getting people in the lobby to do a survey and then saying, hey, I'm the one working on your car. And we had a little oopsie, something like that. I can't remember what happened, but I think that happened about a year ago. Because like customer surveys and... See, I did it. Who knows what else. did that. Or employee surveys or something. It happened. Who knows? All right. See you later. Bye. Maybe I edited the name out so you didn't know it was Discount Tires. But yeah, I've, I've called Discount Tires. Hey, man, I had an idea. Instead of saying you're from the corporate office, call and say that you're the new district manager for, like, Victoria's Secret or something. But and they then know the district tell them manager. That the employees, the female employees, will have to start modeling all of the lingerie. Uh, going forward okay. and see what happens. All right, man, thanks. Why can't I just say I'm from the corporate office and do that? Be like, I'm watching you on the camera. You need to try some on right now. Give hey, me Brad. my own personal show. It's Brian. Kind of bummed out. I got catfished. Thought I found myself a hot girl. Uh, and it turns out it wasn't her. So it got me thinking, I wonder, since you spent about 99% of your life online, I was wondering if you ever thought you so thought you had yourself a hot chick and uh oh i don't go for the hot chick to be a dude or something no i don't Bye. think so
I'm way too smart for those catfishing people. What's good? It's your boy Buckshot. Hey, um, Buckshot. Just got out of work where I was listening to some wonderful episodes of the Snowplow Show and the PLA Show, the shows that I love the most. Aww. When I heard that yeah. you're, uh, you're not doing as many shows because it's so hot. Well, I got news for you, bud. It's real fucking hot where I work. Who are going to truck? Is, is it? Okay. And it's like 130 degrees in the back of that truck, and I don't have an air conditioner. So yeah, but, but I'm... If 90 I'm, degrees I'm, is I'm too old hot and lazy and... to make a prank call, I think 130 degrees is way too hot for me to be loading a truck. So I'm going to have to have you call my work for me and uh, just let them know. Okay. So their number is... What do you know? The voicemail cut off right there. It's the darndest thing. I've got two days of really nice weather, by the way. Yesterday it was 89 degrees, I think, which isn't too bad, really. But today, the high is 77. It's 71 degrees right now. Tomorrow, the high is 77. Saturday, 84. Sunday, 84. It's fucking awesome. But then after that, it's supposed to start getting up to 90 degrees again. I'm going to hopefully fix my air conditioner situation over the next couple days. Do some swapping around and cleaning up, make them work better. Download a few extra BTUs, maybe. Okay, I just saw a Saturday Night Live video called Mr. Dave's... Hold on. Called Mr. Dave's Strange Job Interview, where he keeps referring to himself as C. Dave. Hmm. I would take a look. Okay. Saturday Night Live called Mr. Dave's Strange Job Interview. I don't want to, though. C. Dave. Bye. Okay, fine. Here, I'm going to find it. I found it. Here it is. Here's a clip. Uh, well, let's just, let's just go ahead and see what your application says, Mr. Jerry, Dave. Yeah, but, uh, you can call me Steve. <laughs> okay, Steve. Uh, when asked why you wanted the job of Good engineer, one. you... All right, here, let me go forward, see if there's anything else hilarious in this. To make free Xeroxes of my one-man show entitled Jerry, Steve, Dave's songs in the key of Steve, just kidding again. <laughs> Uh, really one. so I can buy a boatload of fireworks and celebrate the 4th of July in style. Yeah, you know, I have two loves in my life. This is dumb, and I hate this, but you got me to watch a minute and a half of it. Good job. You know, I didn't invent Steve Dave. That's like a thing from Mallrats, that movie from the 90s. Kevin Smith, one of the characters in that was called Steve Dave, and now he has a podcast, I guess. Brad Roy, Steve Dave, Sensei Doug Dabalina. Yeah. Steve Dave. Hey man, you ever my goddamn sound effect with the toilet overflowing for your will it flush calls? Oh, maybe. I uh, never heard back and I was so bummed because I put so much tender loving care into that. Anyway, Sorry. I hope you got it. I hope you use it. And I hope it sounds good. I'm behind on emails as usual. I'm sorry to everybody who has emailed me and I have not responded. I often get behind on emails. There's just too many. It hey, sucks. Brad. So I have a question. When people ask you, like, what do you do for a living? Do you ever lie to them? Like, they pretend you're yes. still a private investigator? Yes. Or do you, like, tell them the truth? Every time. And if you tell them the truth, do you ever get, like, embarrassed that you're a grown man making prank calls on the internet? <sighs> All right. Hope it's not too personal. No, See you, Brad. It's not too personal. But, yeah, that's exactly what I do. People ask me what I do for a living. I tell them I do research work on the internet. Or I just keep it generic. I say I do computer things. Even if I didn't do prank calls, I don't think I would tell them that I was a podcaster because then I'd have to explain everything about my show. I'm used to this because I've always done all this private investigative work. And when I say I do private investigative work, that requires a lot of explaining and it sucks. I used to tell people that I was a spy and I couldn't talk about it, but that never went over well. But yeah, I pretty much just still tell people that I do private investigative work. I do still do a, a job or two every year. Somebody I used to work for will ask me to do something. I'm like, okay, sure, I'll do that. So technically, I'm still doing private investigative work. I used to always tell people I did skip tracing because that sounds a little bit more normal, even though most people don't know what skip tracing is. But it sounds more boring than working for private investigators because at least they don't think it's something really exciting and they have to ask you a bunch of questions about it. I don't like talking to people, you guys. I don't like answering questions. And I've had to deal with telling people what I do for a living for 20 years now, more than 20 years. And then what do I do when I finally quit doing that thing for a living? I do something that's even weirder and even harder to explain. 
I think the most generic thing to say to people is that I'm a broadcaster. I do broadcasting for a living. But then, of course, they're just going to ask more questions about it. And they're going to want to know exactly what I do. And now that I'm doing Brad's Cactus Shack and the totally not the, the phone show shows, at least I can say that I do interview shows and general comedy type shows. I can just leave out the part about the prank calls. That's the real reason I'm doing the PLA show is so I can trick people into thinking I'm normal every once in a while. I think besides the, the probation people and the feds and everything, I've barely told a single person what I do for a living, you know, giving them an honest answer when they ask me. I mean, not including real life friends that I already have and who've known me for years at this point. They all know what I do, but when it's somebody I don't know and they want to know what I do for a living, I'm like, yeah, I, I do computer stuff. I do a lot of internet stuff. It's very generic and very boring. You don't want to hear about it. And I change the subject, not because I'm embarrassed. I just don't want to talk about it. So that's the end of today's show. Be sure to find PLA on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone losers, twitter.com slash phone losers. There's also the Facebook group. I'm sure you'll find that if you type in phone losers of America. There's a snowplow show Facebook page and Twitter account and a Mr. Dabalina Twitter account and Facebook page. All this stuff is linked in the show notes. I think all of it's linked in the show notes. If not, it's on phonelosers.com or snowplowshow.com. I have way too many pages for everything. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show, including Jason B., Wolf of Tin, I Regret Jumping, Team Wolf Jesus, and Lord and Lady of Veggies. It's because of people like you that I make shows like this for a living, and I have to awkwardly explain what I do for a living when people ask me in real life. Thanks a lot, everyone. This is the way we call, and we like to flow. All my diamonds glows, I represent the dirty, dirty South Lake Hills. Yeah, and we're popping pills, uh, and we're making that shows. Yeah, it's Little Rappy. I'm back on the scene, sagging my jeans. My second favorite color is aqua marine. Yes, I get paid. Yes, I have AIDS. I'm a gay sex slave who sleeps in a cage. But that's another story. Let's get back to the AIDS. I'm about to find a cure, and that's for sure. I'm selling out shows at the Amway Arena. 60,000 screaming fans. I wish I could suck on all their wieners. My second favorite soda is Mountain Dew. I'm the number one rapper in the gay sex slave crew. My master has a beard and a lot of tattoos. I sleep in a cage and it smells like poo. My master slaps me in the face and makes me eat my doo doo. Yet who knew I'd run the enterprise like Sulu? Young, hip, you super rich. I get a lot of money cause I suck a lot of dicks. I've had a lot of dudes stick their fingers in my butt. You gay sex slave crew. Now you this know what's up. We're ball. cool, we're hip, we like to strip. You we like to dance and we work for tips. Hey DJ! You Turn me down, you're playing this way too loud, yeah, yeah. this is a party, let's not injure people's ears, yeah, yeah it's little rappy, I don't this know how I got you here. And we like to floss, all the diamonds floss, I represent uh. the dirty, dirty South Lake Hills, and we're popping pins, doing shit that's real, you yeah. represent the dirty, this dirty South Lake Hills.